I'll never be the bloodthirsty maniac pirate. <laughs> Cross of the Dutchman is an action-adventure tale based on the true story of the folk legend Pierre Donia. Big Pierre, as he was called, was seven feet tall and strong enough to bend a coin between his thumb and forefinger. While Pierre starts life as a simple farmer with a loving family, Cross of the Dutchman will take you through the escalation of the Frisian Rebellion against Saxon rule through the eyes of one of its most feared warriors. Americans love stories about rebellion, and as someone with both Anglo-Saxon and Dutch heritage, I found the story to be both humorous and highly engaging. However, the Saxons are not identifiable at any point. They just walk around and be despicable until Pierre shows up to wallop them. I'm always pretty disappointed by one-dimensional villains. I find this kind of duality quite often in Cross of the Dutchman, where I enjoy something, but can't help thinking that it could be a bit more polished. The clothing and buildings all fit in with the time period of the 1500s, but the towns and roads have no discernible feel to them, and it makes the artistic style lose a lot of its magic in the vast sameness. The music and sounds are extremely well done, and I love the graphical style, but the storyline takes about three hours to complete, and doesn't offer much aside from finding chests and smashing Saxons. Defeating foes is relatively easy, but the controls for doing so feel sort of hindered. Attacks will carry you forward, making it hard to land a complete combo. I often find myself stuck in bushes or fences while navigating, and while you can see your outline through the treetops, the same does not hold true when dipping behind buildings. To label this game an RPG would also be a rather large stretch. There are four stat upgrades available, and seven or eight power attacks. Once you've bought those and put them to use running through the story once, you've largely extruded all of the entertainment that Cross of the Dutchman has to offer. Is the game worth $9? Perhaps. If you're interested in the history of this man and the rebellion, the art style and music alone will likely please the casual gamer, but the more hardcore crowd will find themselves wanting much more. I was largely moved by the ending, but simultaneously distraught that it really is the ending. I'll never be the bloodthirsty maniac pirate that decapitated seven men with a single stroke of his six-foot blade. Oh, I slain a good number of Saxons, but I did it as a family man, out of love for kin and country. Whatever happened to good old revenge-driven piracy? Not in this game. You're left to replay the last battle or start a new game, a la Fallout New Vegas, but with only one save slot. While it is a decent game with some historical value, I would highly suggest catching it on sale. So here's my score breakdown for Cross of the Dutchman. The controls are a bit clunky. I found myself caught up, like I said, on bushes and fences a whole lot. So I've decided to give it a 4 out of 10. Combat's not great either. Uh, fun factor, I've given it a 3 out of 10. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, go kill the bad guys, break some crates, get some coins, buy some stuff. There's not even a whole lot of stuff to buy, so I didn't have that many upgrades to look forward to. Kind of disappointing on the fun factor, out of 3 out of 10. Difficulty, I've given a 2 out of 10. I basically waltzed through this game. Uh, I did die maybe 3 or 4 times in the 2 or 3 hours I was playing. But overall, it's not too hard since your health regens relatively fast if you aren't being hit. So just stand back from the battle, let your cronies take some hits, and uh, then head back in there, and it's no problem at all. Replayability, I've given a 0 out of 10. I don't see any reason to replay this game. Um, there are two health and sta two stamina upgrades, as well as like 8 or 9 power attacks, maybe. That might be an overestimation. So once you've, once you've gotten those, there's really not a whole, reason, a whole lot of reason to go back. Replayability, 0 out of 10. Innovation, obviously I've seen the top-down arena brawler kind of thing before. I've given Innovation a 5 out of 10 simply because I've never heard this story told before. Um, Pierre Donia is definitely an interesting folk hero, and if I know about John Henry and Paul Bunyan, why not Pierre Donia? Um, the graphics I've given an 8 out of 10. I really love the graphical style. It looks like something that was drawn first and then rendered, which may or may not be true, but... It's got a really cool, unique-looking style to it, and uh, I like it a lot. 8 out of 10. It loses a couple points because it's quite samey. Um, the music I've given a 9 out of 10. I love folk music so much, and there, it's just something that taps into my roots, definitely. So I've given the music a 9 out of 10. It's enjoyable all the way through, even the parts where it's uh, a bit understated. 
the sound effects, I've given an 8 out of 10. I really love the sound work here. You smash a box, you really feel like you're smashing that fucking box. You know, power attacks have a, a good strong sound to them. I think the sound work was really done, and I've decided to give that an 8 out of 10. The story, I've given a 6 out of 10. I do enjoy the humor and how it is told. However, I would like to see uh, a bit more character given to uh, some of these characters. I'm left wondering a lot about the wife and, you know, the Saxons and why are they why are they doing this? They're not just doing it to be dicks, so it did leave a lot of stuff out, uh, but there are there is some historical quality to it, as well as being uh, pretty funny and well written. So I've given the story a six out of ten. The level design, again, quite samey. You're just running down a road to a town and then run to another town, beat some more dudes up. Uh, level design's not great. Uh, I didn't enjoy the stealth aspects uh, an extreme amount because it did send you back to like a previous, like the start of the chapter. There's no checkpoint within the chapter, so you're left replaying a few minutes, which is not really cool in my book. <laughs> so overall, um, this game probably average at best. I've decided to give Cross of the Dutchman a 2.4 out of five stars that is almost half not quite uh, 48 out of 100 is what it scored in total so um, yeah not not exactly recommended however uh, it is at your own discretion if you like the look of the game if you want to learn more about this guy heck go pick it up but in order for me to tell all my friends to run out and buy cross of the Dutchman it will need to offer a lot more content with just a little bit more polish. While it is a decent game with some historical value, I find the gameplay average at best and would highly suggest catching it on sale. I was provided a review key by Triangle Studios and I do thank them for that. I would also thank you to like, comment, and or subscribe on this video. If you did enjoy, friends, I have been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. And I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, bye! One, two, three, four, goodbye, goodbye, see you.